Hello everyone, welcome back to another installment of the Film Me In podcast where this week we're going to film you in very symmetrically and visually pleasingly. Um, I'm your host, uh, Xander Langwison, back from my uh, from my move. Um, I'm all settled in, um, yeah. if anyone if anyone cares. Uh, well, you hey. don't. We'll, we'll carry on. I uh, care. With me as always is my wonderful uh, panel of co-hosts. We've got Alex. Hola. We've got Siwan. Hola. And we've got Joe. Hola. Hola. I really Como wanted est- to say howdy, but then there was a pattern, so... Como estas? Come on, <laughs> Estoy muy bien, merci. Mi soy Dora. Grazie, lad. Mi casa, Pisa. su casa. Mi casa, mu- 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 uh, Lion King. Brother, help me! Um... I hope everyone's good because yeah. I'm I'm no. clearly feeling so great. Um, this week we're gonna discuss. Um, we're gonna go through Wes Anderson's filmography because he has a new movie out. Asteroid City is currently in cinemas. He just had his highest opening weekend in America um, throughout his entire career, so that's amazing. And of course, it's coming to digital in like a week. So um, we figured we'd go through his career and sort of dissect it a little bit and see what we like see what we don't like and uh see how he's got to this point uh but first d- does anyone have a moan they'd like to tell me um aka tell me moan uh joe joe go for it um my moan is about blu-rays and physical media being out of print um, okay so recently i've had an urge well uh, we're working our way through all of the Reese Smith stuff, even stuff that he makes like small appearances in. So he's in the series Car Share, and he's in this one-off film called First Men the Moon, which has got Mark Gatiss in. Now, I've tried to find both of these. First Men in the Moon is on like Amazon <clears throat> and eBay for 150 quid. There's no Blu-ray, it's just a DVD. I've looked everywhere, CEX, HMV, that little shop that we went to once, Xander. It's not there. Same with Car Share. I want the complete collection, which comes with Series 1, Series 2, the special. There's another one, and then, uh, like, a radio thing they did. The only one that exists is Series 1 and 2 box set, which doesn't even come with the final episode. It's out of print. It doesn't exist anymore. It's not in HMV or CEX or, again, that shop that me and Xander went to once. Um, so... Fop. And fop. Fop. That's it. So... It's annoying, but it, it does highlight the importance of physical media. Like, get it while it's there, you know? Because you Absolutely, yeah. As as an ex uh, Blu-ray collector, it's I I ex. like having. Yeah, no, I I I went through a lot of my Blu-rays during lockdown and was like, you know, so many of them are on streaming. And to be fair, I probably shouldn't have done that anyway. Um, <laughs> what is Idiot. the difference between Blu-ray and normal video? Five quid. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> no, so so Blu-ray versus a DVD, it's it's just better quality on the picture and sound, um, but also they they come they started coming with like more special features now. So you used to be able to get a DVD with like special features on the back, like documentary about how they made it, and you can now only get those on the Blu-ray, or now sometimes only the 4K version of movies, which is I think a little bit criminal, but whatever. Crime ridden. Um, crime ridden. Uh, but yeah, no. As I, I did. You guys hear about that story about uh, the French Connection, the movie from the seventies with Gene Hackman that got changed on Disney Plus and yes. other streaming platforms. Yeah, yes. and like so. with with no telling about how this happened, but it just like they they cut out a scene in the movie because it because some people found it mildly offensive, and it's like the scene does include a derogatory term it's like okay that's not great but it's it makes sense for the character if you understand the context of it and then they they cut it out of the movie and it's it's a horrendous cut if you've seen like the the change and then you know everyone who's got the copy on blu-ray is still watching it like yeah this is the same version i've been watching for 20 years you know? i hate that when like they'll ignore the context it's like where everyone starts kicking off about tropic thunder with robert downey jr in it yeah. they're like who did blackface and it's like well, i swear that's, that happens that's every the point. year it happens it happens once a year but it's like that's the point it's he's he's an actor in the movie who did black like that's the whole point of the film and that's the whole point of the character so like you know of course when you take away context anything can look bad 
Absolutely, um, absolutely. It's just mm-hmm. um, that's mental. Though. Solid, solid moan show that will be put in the moan catalog. Yeah, um, in the moan archives. The moan archives. Yes. I have one that picks off straight off the back of that, and it's very similar. Go. Physical copies of video games. Okay, go for there's, it. There's a lot of like video games. Uh, I mean, obviously, they don't have to do physical copies of things on like PC and Steam and stuff like that because most PCs as well don't have a CD cartridge anymore. Uh, I've only got one on mine and it's a portable one. That is um, stupid. It is really stupid. I, I oh. think it's like completely ridiculous to take away like this um, kind of like. I mean, I don't know. You could say the th- same thing about TVs nowadays that don't have DVD players automatically in them or, or any like yeah. anything like this. You know, it's this old media that's fa- failing out. But a lot of like video games, um, stuff like the Wii and the Switch, and and especially on consoles uh, like the Xbox and the PS4 um, or PS5 now. Oh God, um, they just don't do physical copies of a lot of the games on there anymore, and it's it's, it's upsetting. Like they'll do a few. Don't get me wrong, but they're, they're really trying to get rid of the physical copy thing. I mean, the PS5, for example, released one version that had the CD uh, slit, and the other one didn't. So, like, depending on which PS5 you got, you could buy one, and all your game discs would be obsolete. Yeah, and if you want the if you want the disc in it, it's like an extra. Was it an extra fifty or a hundred? It was. It was. Yeah, it was something like that. It wasn't cheap. So I think it's, yeah. I think it's just a bit annoying. Because if, if anything, I use like my PlayStation to watch Blu-rays on. It, that yeah. is my Blu-ray. I use my player. Xbox to do it. Yeah, I use my yeah. Xbox. So I, I don't get why they're trying to get that out. I guess because it looks old-fashioned, whatever. But Yeah, yeah but they, no. they need to remember who's buying the consoles. <laughs> like, come on. It's going to be like the load of us who were born like 2090s and, and stuff who like bought them and play them and, and you know are still used to that technology so you kind of need to remember who's paying for it exactly exactly uh, um mine. yes good moan thank you siwan do you have a moan i don't think i do <laughs> I've been tr- don't have a moan I don't think oh, that's I boring come think. on be also angry every, everything something. everything's just been great well, for you this week that's fantastic yeah well there's only great. there's one thing but it's kind of <clears throat> similar to what alex said last week it's, didn't you moan about your landlord or something like that? Uh, oh, I was, yeah, I moaned about how you have to, like, uh, about the referencing criteria for renting a property, specifically in the UK, at least. Okay, mine's not that. It's <laughs> not quite that. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like, we obviously we're moving out, and he's like, we emailed asking, oh, you know, what do you want us to do? Um, he's answered half of what we asked, and what he has answered back we have follow-up questions, which he hasn't answered to. So, like, but then he's left it four days now without answering any of us. Like, he, he wants us to put the keys in the lockbox. We don't have the code for the lockbox. So what are we meant to do with the keys? So, okay, fine, that's my moan. Our landlord he also s- not answering fair. us. He, he did also say about, like, oh, yeah, make sure the, the garden's clean. And we're like, do we need to do a bit of gardening or do we just need to remove rubbish? We don't know. And so, like the bins as well are a pain in the bum. Oh yeah, because you'll get charged if your bins are full. We did when we moved out. They charged us about 95 quid because our bins were full outside. The fun, thing is, the fun thing is that our bin day is the day after we leave. So like we could leave them out and the neighbours bring them back because they generally do bring them back in. And But no, nah, we couldn't. So yeah. But because he hasn't answered, we don't know. When um when I moved out of my, I lived in a basement flat. And when I moved out of there, we got charged like because there were five of us living there, and we got charged each about a hundred pound from our deposit, uh, because of um because of some things left in the, in the house. One of them was like some bleach from under the under the sink in the kitchen, where we were like. We don't need these, so we'll leave them for the next people. Mm. And they binned them and were like, yeah, you've left those. Um, one of them was a bit of the um, kitchen, a bit of the fridge, you know, like the salad drawer. Um, we'd washed that before we left, and we left it on the drying rack by accident. They charged us to move that. Um, and under one of the beds, I swear to God, they sent us a picture of this. And they was like, there's rubbish left in one of the rooms. They lifted the mattress, and there was an empty 
Werther's original. Not like a big pack, a single Werther's original. No, an didn't. empty little wrapper. And they took that picture and sent it to us and was like, yeah, we'll charge you 100 quid. Oh, Off your deposit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's 500 quid. Yeah, we we, tra- we we argued it with them like, this is outrageous. But then they, um, they, they, they essentially showed us the process and it would have taken months and months and months. That's the and problem. So they, 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 just ground, they just ground us down. So we're like, well, fine, we'll just take what we can get. Because otherwise they'll just take more offers. There's nobody that you can really, or at least to my knowledge, there's nobody that you can really go to to be like, help. These guys are like extorting all of my deposit from me. And, yeah. this, you know, they're not, they're, it's either I spend loads of money trying to fight it and loads of time trying to fight it, or I just give up and, and take, you know, take what I can. Yeah, exactly. Um, <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. You're right, you. Joe. My la- sorry, that's all gonna- you're gonna all hear that on theirs under when you edit. But like, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> my laptop. <laughs> can I can I add an extra moan? My laptop is <laughs> utterly trash. For some reason, whenever I turn it on, it goes. Isn't it a MacBook though? A MacBook? No, it's an it's an. <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> no, it's an Acer. It's an Acer. Oh, it's an Acer. Right. Um, so what I was doing just then is I was tapping it because if you tap it in a certain way, it stops groaning. And also, I, used I turned to do that with my PC. Its hard drive was like loosely connected, and ever I just have to punch it to stop it vibrating, and it worked. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. And yeah. like, I turned it what over. Before, if I blow the the bottom of it, it might. If you blow it, it'll be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I blow it, like there, there, there. Calm down. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, We're looking to get you a new laptop. God bless you, Joe. <laughs> um. I, I, I don't really have much of a moan. I guess I'll, I'll go with the fact that... Um, but it's not even a moan. I watched... Um, I watched a load of good movies in the past couple of weeks because I... But that it's, it's an anti-moan. Because everyone I moved away from um, was like, Xander, I want to I wanna spend time with you before you leave. Do you want to watch a movie? And I'm like, absolutely, I want to watch a movie. And so I just spent the last week I was... I was away watching all of my favorite movies with some really nice people, which was great. Because every... No, I'm not... Yeah. No, I'm not doing... I'm putting my hand up. I want a list of these movies. I want a list of these movies. A list because, of them. Oh, crap. Um, I'm gonna, we need I was, stuff to I was, watch. I was going to go through them later. Hang on. You, you'll have to let me... Uh, you'll have to give me a moment. Um, sorry, guys. What is that? What did you just eat? I know, I'm sorry. No, not I'm you. Sorry. I don't I... give a fuck about you. I'm asking what Joe just ate. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's giggling like a Japanese schoolgirl. What did you just eat? What are you eating? Dude, it's like when your dog's got something in its mouth <laughs> and you like, spit it out and they start giggling and run off. That's what it's Wait, like. Wait, do dogs laugh? Have you never heard a dog laugh? That's terrifying. I mean, I find dogs scary, Dude, but... Before they this don't recording, laugh my... like ha ha ha. If a dog went... <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> I'm gone. You're gonna, you're gonna shoot. You're gonna shoot yourself when we get to the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, my dog come in just before and did like a front flip and then left. I was like, <laughs> sad, 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 my reaction to it. It's like a little sausage dog. She just did that. I was like. I was like, no one's gonna believe me. Nobody's gonna believe me that that's happened. <laughs> it Sorry, it seems unlikely, but I believe you because the the yeah. image of it is amazing. I was just sat here like. <laughs> how'd you do that no sorry continue um so so i watched um the ones i can remember i watched six um i watched anchorman oh. one of my favorite comedies anchorman 2 is better that sorry excuse me i disagree anchorman 2 is funny i disagree both are shit <laughs> it's okay Sander. Sander, i'm with you i'm with you on this i'm with you one's got harrison <laughs> ford as a okay. wear hyena and the ghost of Stonewall Jackson. First one one does have the ghost of Stonewall Jackson. That is quite funny. Anyway, um, Interstellar. Okay. Yep. Th- and I think it's decided that that is probably my favourite Chris Nolan movie. Um, I know, I know. Until uh, Oppenheimer. I don't get, I, I don't Brain understand Dead, it enough to. Brain uh, which I, I heard Joe recommend last week. So you took mine this week, you bastard. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's a great movie. That's a weird movie. Um, I watched Mandy, the Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, right. Great movie. Um, I watched my favourite. I watched RoboCop. 
we need to watch that. that. The and then on my first, and then on my first night back home, um, I watched Aliens. So I mean, alien, it's all right. Alien with Alien with an S. Alien with an S. So the second aliens. one. Aliens. The second yeah. one. Oh. Aliens. Hang on. Do, do you guys not like Aliens? I yeah, don't like horror right. films. It's all right. It's not, uh, aliens it's not isn't like even the, a horror the film. amazing thing that it was made out to be. Oh, you guys hurt my head. Hey, I never watched it because it's a horror film, so I'm exempt. It has its okay. moment, and Sigourney Weaver, so it's fine. I love Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, Rah. just watch her for two hours. Like, yeah, it's fine, actually. It's a good film. Right. Shall we uh, Shall we get on to the main topic? Yes. I think we should. Wes Anderson. He has made Who's that? 11 movies. That doesn't sound um, like a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's been since the year 1996 when he first released Bottle Rocket. That was his first movie. Um, and that was based on a short film he made the year before. Um, so that is how many years? 27 years he's been actively making films. And yeah, 11 films. That's a pretty good track record. I've made more YouTube um, videos than that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we've made more podcast episodes than that. So We um, have made more podcast episodes. Sorry, episodes. In the past, if, even in the past. If you. Podcasting is a lazy form of content and easy. This is true. It, trust me, it is not. It I is know, not. I you know, have I no idea. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, I joke, I joke. I kid, I kid. I kid, I kid. I kid, I kid. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through these all the, all these movies, starting from Bo- Bottle Rocket all the way through till Asteroid City, which released a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to go through and share our thoughts on them. Uh, some of them we haven't all seen. I did because I did the homework. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so oh, Max Fisher. Um, Sander, <laughs> some of us have a job, you bum. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> is your nickname Wes Sanderson then? I've been working. Okay? <laughs> Wes Sanderson. We're calling you Wes Sanderson now. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through these and share our thoughts. And then I've, I've got some stuff at the end as well. Uh, but first up, Bottle Rocket. I think I'm the only one that's seen this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go okay, it, sorry. Andrew. This wasn't meant to be a flex. Okay, so so Bottle Rocket was his first movie, and it is so weird to see an unstylized Wes Anderson film because it's shot like just like a normal indie film. Like it's very cheap, but it's about a, a couple of friends who one of them starts off in a mental asylum and he gets released, and the other one is kind of like trying to be kind of a gangster. Um, thief and so then they try and plan these elaborate heists and they never go very well for anyone Um, and it's listen it's low stakes it's kind of cute Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson are in it and James Kahn's in it as well Um, good performances from them but I I didn't see what other people saw I thought it was like a perfectly fine movie so I guess we won't spend too much time on this one. Well, I was just looking at it um, now, and I noticed that Owen Wilson also worked on the screenplay. Yeah, he's. if you look at his early career, he actually wrote, co-wrote a lot of the early ones. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got writing credits, I believe, on The Royal Tenenbaums as well, and on The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. And Rushmore as well. And Rushmore. And then... Um, Noah Bombach has some writing credits on Fantastic Mr. Fox. And I think it's either the Darjeeling Limited or Moonrise Kingdom later on. Um, Who's so he's Noah? got... he's got Moonrise Kingdom, n- yeah. Noah Bombach, um, he wrote Madagascar 3. Oh, no. And then, oh. made, and then made Marriage Story. Madagascar what, 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 a, what a couple of films. jump from that? Ma- Madagascar and 3 is he- such a good film. <clears throat> Joe, shut up. Madagascar was the best. Yeah, I thought it was a good film. I'm still about the cancel Madagascar 4. Sorry, continue. He was married to Greta Gerwig, but now they still work together, so he's he's written Barbie as well. Awkward. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's kind of sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. Still um, we'll move on then to a film that we have definitely all seen, Rushmore, from 1998. Yay. Starring Jason Schwartzman. Oh no, do you guys not like this? No. This was weird. This was like... We we ordered the Chinese, and I was more interested in the Chinese than the than what was on the telly. It was just like a Man. Oh, yeah, but the, Chi- uh, the Chinese takeaways in our area were really class. It was really good. <laughs> it, was, it was literally just this little nerd, this simp, the ultimate simp, 
called Max Fisher, who's simping. Okay, maybe I am, but I do it. No, I, I do it terribly. Um, but he's simping over this his school teacher who he's kind of fallen in love with, and he's like getting her. He wants to get a, a full size aquarium. He's he got the the Latin course reinstated because he learned she likes Latin, um, and it's that. And then I don't know. It, it's just really weird, and it's a bit strange as well that it's just this fifteen year old wants to you know be with this old woman. Listen, it's it's a high school crush, but it's just we all had high school crushes on teachers. Like that's a thing. Yeah, but Everyone I never has it when did you grow what up. he did. Yeah, he, no, he kisses b- her. Because she this talks is... about like, do you want a blowjob and a handjob? It's like even joking she's... about it, mentioning it. It's really weird. <coughs> no, she's tra- in that scene. She's clearly trying to scare him. Hmm. To it, to to because because then she says that. I don't think that like, would Whoa. that would work in court. That would not work in court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was trying to scare him by threatening a blowjob. Um, hmm, maybe not. <laughs> um, I think it's really qu- quite cute and it's just weird. It is weird. It's a weird movie, but that's you could say that about literally any one of Wes Anderson's movies. They're they are quirky. All incredibly outlandish. Yeah. And I, I love the relationship between Bill Murray and Jason Schwartzman, who plays Max Fisher. So Bill Murray's character, if you haven't seen it, is um, starts off as um, Jason Schwartzman's sort of mentor, but then becomes his, his rival in love, which is it's really funny. It's a really silly concept, and I think it's I think it's even funnier that they are both such similar people. Um, and that by the end they do kind of reconcile that. I, th- I think it's a really sweet movie. Yeah. It's got really great performances as well. And um, I I love the idea that he keeps directing plays based on very violent movies. Oh yeah, that was great. That that kid, if he's, in, <laughs> like, if he's doing film, that kid's going far, because fucking hell. He's got production <laughs> value on those plays. <laughs> those plays were better than the film. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd love to see his plays. I'd love to see his place. Plays. Ah, oh, that's a bit noncy. That's a bit noncy. <laughs> Who saw the Royal Tenenbaums? <laughs> this is the one I saw half of. You I, saw I have bit. not, I'm afraid. What were your impressions, Alex? Um, it was good. It was just good. I, I mean, I'd, I'd happily watch the end of it, I guess, at some point. Um, <laughs> I, I know that Ben I, Stiller's in it, so that ben must Stiller mean something. Is in it. I love Ben Stiller. I love him. I, I don't like Ben Stiller. Why? Uh, ben Stiller doesn't like you, Xander. Oh, that's great. Why? No, I think... Why? Because I feel like he's, he tries to play like the lovable schmuck in most things, and he's he really not good at that. Like Aww. in Night at the Museum, I just want to hit him. But hey. then you watch him in Dodgeball or Tropic Thunder where he's being an arsehole. He's so good. He's, he's so good. He's good as Alex the Lion. And in this, he's also like... Is Alex the Lion? Yes. Did, Did you not know that was Alex the Lion? I did not know. Do you know who voices oh, the rest of them? No. Well, right, so Chris Rock is the zebra. No. Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith is the fucking hippo. No. Which is why we're never going to get a Madagascar 4. They're going to slap each other. And then and that then guy from David Friends. And then Schwimmer is... is the fucking giraffe. And freaking Sasha Baron Cohen is King Julian. No, Borat right, is no. King he Julian. Is. Yeah. It's got a weirdly How did you good not know cast. This? I don't know, bro. I just enjoyed the films and went on with my day. I'm not a fucking. Nerd. And then I play Madagascar. Hey, hey. I play Mort. Anyway, um, yeah, I can see that. But, like, why, that do you, yeah, but, why do you hate? No, because when whenever he plays like this lovable schmuck, I just don't believe it. He can't, he he looks he kind of looks slimy, what about and I think in he works he works better when he's not being himself. Like I think he's really good in dodgeball. Tropic Thunder, and in this, he's, he's still like touch. he's still likable in this, mm-hmm. but he's like not just that one narrow thing where it's like, oh, I'm trying to get me life together. <laughs> it's it's not that. It feels very different, and I think he's really good in this. I can respect um, that. And I I re- th- this is like the first time you sort of see the beginnings of the Wes Anderson, like you know, big cast of. 
wacky characters, quirky characters that are sort of like, like, because there's quite a few of these that are like family orientated. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is, you know, obviously it's a huge film about a huge family. Um, I think Gene Hackman's really good. And I think his progression through the movie is really good and believable, which is a problem I have with a film later on down the list. Um, And I think, I think Gwyneth Paltrow is really good. I think we all forget that Gwyneth Paltrow used to be a, a real actress. Yeah. And not just turn up in the odd Marvel movie and make everyone l- smell her vagina. Like, yeah. she's uh, she was actually <laughs> really good in this. Please say that's the clip for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll stick that up on Twitter. <laughs> um, and, and it's heartbreaking at the end. I think the ending is heartbreaking. I, th- I think it sort of... It has a problem that some of these... Some films around this era has for Wes Anderson is in that it's a little bit too long. Um, but I think the, the ending is nailed and I think there's sort of the middle section that sort of loses me a bit, but I think it's a really solid movie and it's one that I would definitely revisit. How long is the film? I think it's like just under two hours. Oh, okay. I think it's an hour 50. Hour 50. It's quite a good length. But you see him, his films later on are all like an hour and a half, an hour, and a half hour 40 and sometimes even an hour 50 isn't necessarily overly long, but it can feel long for the story. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like even a film that's an hour and a half can feel long yeah. mm-hmm. if it's not, you know, if it's not necessary. Like this... Labyrinth, which was god awful. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, like, like Bottle Rocket was about an hour and a half and I felt like, you know, there's, I mean, it feels too long. Yeah. yeah, it was like yeah. the Batman that was like nearly three hours, and I was just it just went so quickly, you know. It was which, just... Yeah, it, it, that just happens. Um, so yeah, the Royal Tenenbaums. If you haven't seen it, I, I think you guys would like it. So do go and check it out. It's a uh, it's a good time. I will try and watch the rest of it. Let's move on to I think probably his most divisive movie, which is uh, from two thousand four, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. This is my feck. <laughs> <laughs> this is your feck. <laughs> My feck, bro. No. This... Your your feck and savour it. This... <laughs> this is my second favourite Wes Anderson film. I think I, I rewatched it today just before the podcast and I fell in love with it all over again. And I cannot understand the criticisms that Xander has against it. I have criticisms against it. Ooh. Um I, I, it was when when I watched it. This is the one that's too long. This is... It's two hours, and I'm like, this could be about half hour shorter. This genuinely, it feels so long. What bits of it would you cut? Some part of the middle. <laughs> may, may, maybe some of the pirate stuff. I feel oh like that... no, the pirate stuff was the best. You get to see Bill Murray run across a yacht with a Glock and start I... <laughs> like shooting at pirates in speedos yelling, Get off my boat! I, I also think that this um, I think after, with time the movie has grown on me because mm-hmm. I, I originally was like this is like a 5 out of 10 but now I've I've thought about it more and the ending is so poignant the ending's beautiful it's a very of this beautiful movie. ending and I think it it's then, since then become a, a 6 out of 10 and over time I could see myself liking this more and more so I'm 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 okay with it being like low down at the moment because I don't think he's not made a bad movie. This isn't a bad movie. Mm-hmm. It's just I think it has problems. It does have some world class line deliveries though from specifically from Bill Murray. He, yeah, he's he's, he's really good. Bill Wait, Mar- Xander. Bill Murray and this is incredible. Xander, by any chance, does this does this film have world class line deliveries in it? Okay, yes, I said that to you guys <laughs> in the build up before this, Joe. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. Just, I think I said chat. it to you. I think I said it to you on the phone as well the other day. <laughs> this is number three. Uh, <laughs> so, the thing that I really like about the Life Aquatic is it, like, especially the underwater scenes. They feel so surreal, and I yeah, wish they that the film had more underwater scenes. That is like my biggest gripe with it. I think I would have loved to see more. I think the, the like all the animals being stop motion was incredible. Um, and really all the animals in the film except for Cody oh, the dog were all may- stop motion maybe this is what kind of led to him doing Fantastic Mr. Fox and All the Dogs Xander has his hands up um, do you know who helped him create those animated sections you guys are going to love this who Henry Selleck the man who made wow. 
The Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline. Oh, okay. oh. he That's helped cool. Wes Anderson make those underwater. I want to watch this film now just for that. No, the underwater scenes are like uh, all the animals are all stop motion. Uh, like at the beginning of the scene, a little boy hands Steve uh, a seahorse in a bag, and it's just a still of the seahorse like wriggling around in this little plastic bag. Yeah, and it's so beautiful. And like the f- the f- the crabs on the beach fighting each other, and it one of them just <laughs> takes one of their claws and like scuttles off. It's just so brilliant. And it's obviously there's this, the there's one. the big finale of the scene, which you guys haven't s- the, the film sorry which uh you guys haven't seen yet so i won't necessarily spoil yeah. but it's it's so beautiful it um, is it is um I, I think it's got a really great owen wilson performance i mean owen wilson is in nearly all of these mm. so like it, it's bound to have him in somewhere but i think he's he's really good in this his character is so lovable and also there is a it's big mystery you know, as to whether he is or he isn't Steve's father in the film, like that. That's Steve's son. Steve. Yeah. I'm so tired, right? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Go for it's, it. There's a big question at the end of the film, which still isn't answered, as to whether or not he is Steve's son. So it's it is really really interesting, just his character and his whole character development, especially his romance with Kate Blanchett's character. Um, yeah. Which I think is really adorable. I um, I'll be. I'll... Kate Blanchett's accent annoyed me mildly because really? it it felt like it was some sometimes slightly more British <laughs> in some scenes brilliant. than it was in others. I think there's there's a, I think it's just one specific scene that I was like, this sounds more posh. <laughs> it sounds more British, but maybe it's because she hasn't hadn't been on screen for a while. I don't know. I also think sorry, Joe's got his hand up. We'll go to Joe. No, no. When you talk about Owen Wilson, you said he's in almost every film. When we were watching Rushmore, there's the there's a character that sounds just like Owen Wilson. I think it's like the the gym teacher or the the, the I don't know. There's some. It, it's when they're outside and he Owen starts Wilson talking. Owen Wilson is credited as being in that film. So did they dub this character with Owen Wilson? I'm not too sure. He is credited in the cast. I don't remember seeing. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Unless that was Owen Wilson and he just looked really different. It wasn't Owen Wilson. No. The dude's nose was straight. <laughs> oh, God. Aww. No, it's not a, it's not a bad don't, li- don't listen to her. Don't listen That's to her. That's so Wilson. rude. Yeah. Whoa, we're going to have to kick you out of filming Wilson. podcast now. His nose is great. You've, Owen Wilson is no longer a fan of this podcast now, no, guys. No, yeah, because no. you just, you just, you just oh, respect Oh, no. Owen, oh, please, I'm sorry. Come back. Uh, one thing I will say just before we move on is my favourite scene out of this entire film is when Jeff Goldblum hits a three-legged dog on the head f- telling it to shut up. Um, <laughs> and it's just such a... I, I cry. I actually like physically cried every time I see that scene out of just laughter. I, I love the moment he gets shot. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's really great. He, and he's just... It's funny because he's, he's got blood like dripping all down him. He's holding the wound, but he's just like... He's just trotting on. It's, it's so yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this one will get better with time for me. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to rewatch it in the future. Correct me if I'm um, wrong, but I also think that this is like the first film that um, William Defoe is in. Yes, I, it is. It is. Yeah, well, you you'll notice there's a lot of recurring cast members in um, in Wes Anderson films, really? and they're all re- they're all really like A list yeah. actors. I mean, Asteroid City. What? We'll I never to. knew that. Has, like, crazy. Asteroid City is when, like, all of them come together. It's like the Avengers yeah. of A-list actors. <laughs> um, I think my, my problem with Life Aquatic, though, mainly is, A, the, the, the length. <laughs> and I think Bill Murray's character is just too awful for most of the movie. I think he, he the, there's a redemption there, but like it just, I feel like it takes too long. He's still like not a great dude. Um, the thing, no, the thing with Steve's character, I think though, just to counteract that really quickly, is um, he's meant to be, he's meant to be just an arsehole. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think that he does be, he's he's an arsehole in a very good way. Like, it's clear that like somehow he cares for his crew, but at the same time. You know, he's more worried about them losing the funding for their new expedition in order to find the creature. Yeah, he has he has priorities. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Bill Murray's really good at that sort of 
arseholery? Isn't that yes. just Bill Murray? What was that, sorry, someone? Isn't that just how Bill Murray seems to be? Yeah, in general, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's lovely, but also... I, 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 he's really good at playing a dick. I might be scared. That really would... good. I think, see, that's it. He's, you notice that he does play slightly different characters because in the Royal Tenenbaums, he's not he's not an asshole at all in that movie. He's quite a sweet man that's just sort of tied up in all this family drama. That's... And he's a badger in Fantastic Mr. Fox. And he's a badger. That's a real challenge for and him. And he's a dog in Isle of Dogs. Yeah, he's a really yeah. cute dog, but we'll get on to it. Really cute dog. Um, the next film is The Darjeeling Limited. <gasps> what we've seen! Adrian Brody, my beloved. Oh, no. She has a crush on Adrian I Brody. Him. I think Joe he looks odd. Jo- Joe thinks he looks odd. And I, think I understand good. all her other crushes, but Adrian Brody... No, I respect He's that. an odd-looking man. I, I respect this I, crutch. He's in the penis, I, so, like, he's it's really the, weird. Sorry, he's in the penis. The penis. In the pianist. Right, okay. It just sounded like you said he's in the penis. He's yeah, in so. the penis. That's what you heard it here first. This is what's going on Twitter, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian um, Brody is in the penis. I mean, to be honest, all three of them in the drawing limited, they're all just good-looking in a very weird way. I it's agree. A, it's yeah. a very good comfort film. It's it just is. three blokes on a train going on an adventure to see their mum. I liked it. Yeah. Can't relate. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so to get a mum then. Yeah, I lost my dad and I just got a new one recently, so. Quite easy. Um, I, I think this one started off really slow and I was a little bit worried that this might be the first one that I didn't like. But then the longer it went on, the more I loved it. Yeah. It's, um, I, say... I loved all the little character quirks. I love, there's a scene at the beginning that I really laughed at when Owen Wilson's ordering every, every for everyone, like, oh, do you want the fish? You want the fish? Oh, do you want the chicken? You'll get the chicken. And then I think it's Adrian Brody takes him aside and like, don't do that again. And the next time that they order, he does the exact same thing and orders for everyone. And I just, I found that really funny. Yeah, he, he, well, that's it. He says, he says um, I'm, I'm not going to order for you, but you want this, right? And he's like, yes, I do want that. <laughs> It's just great. Um, but th- then that, that 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 pays off later because you meet their mum and he's just yeah. he's their mum like it's mm. really the exact cute. Same. Yeah. W- w- um, when you say about the the pacing of like it starts off slow and ends nicely, I'd I'd say it's the reverse. I felt like the ending could have ended a bit sooner. I was like, okay, it, 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 it's still going. Not that I minded, but I think you know you could have cut. Maybe three, three minutes off of that. Three or five minutes. Three minutes is oddly specific. No, I, I get you though. I totally understand you. No, because there's like even like for example the film Joker, that film could have ended a lot sooner, and then you've got the whole ending of him just running down the corridor from side to side. You don't need that. You have to know when to stop a film because otherwise it just keeps on going. Return of the King. You, no. You need- and that's fine. That one's fine. <laughs> that one but you gets need to know when to stop, because otherwise you've got you've got a person that checks their watch or in the modern day their phone. So, you know. Absolutely. But I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed the film. It was fun, and I love Owen Wilson. And he said, "Wow." So. And you started to see like wow. more of the Wes Andersonisms, like the. Yes. It looked more like it. It did, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I was um. I, I was thinking about this, having because I watched all these in order of release, mm. and you can sort of see how how the progression comes through. And I don't think anything actually fully like looks properly like a what you if you say a Wes Anderson film, what you probably immediately think of is something that it doesn't start until Fantastic Mr. Fox, because then after that everything is sort of more precise and visually pleasing as i said at the start um and you see sort of the beginnings of that in this and in life aquatic go on alex this is uh this is something i do enjoy about wes anderson compared to other kind of i don't want to say gimmick directors but like if you watch the film you know it's them like quentin tarantino for example with wes anderson we've seen his like evolution and it's getting better like yeah it's getting so much better but then you look at quentin tarantino who's been going on, and what was his most recent film? It was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, wasn't it? That yeah. was such a 
bad film. It was really abysmal. It was two hours of montages and then a fight scene at the end. I skipped to the fight scene. The, the entire film was so boring. Like, it just bored me out of my mind. But that's like a... Xander's looking at me really terribly right now. But you see some directors that evolve with their style. They do it really, really terribly. But thankfully, you know, Wes Anderson's going in the best direction possible. I think we're going to have to do a hot takes episode with, with Alex. Ooh, can we do a hot takes episode? I have a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You have the most hot takes. Thank you. I... I, I actually think Tarantino's, like, I, I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of his best. That's a that's abysmal. We're, we're going to do a hot takes episode. He's gonna... I haven't seen it, so it must fuck. be bad. He just okay. is. I'm sorry, Pulp Fiction is the most overrated fucking film after The Godfather I've ever fucking seen. I've never seen Pulp Fiction, to be honest with you. It's shit! Can I just nah. say, Xander, listen, Xander listen. do you remember at the beginning of like this this revival of the podcast when we were like, let's get have three F-words oh, yeah. per person <laughs> per episode? I ruined that because I, I end every sentence with a swear word, I think. Whoops, sorry. It's fine. No, no, I'd say keep going. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep worse. fucking going if I want to keep fucking going. Get worse. <laughs> fucking Anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, ble- so, I bleeped the C word in the last one, so we'd be consistent film, with that. This film is definitely the beginning of um, also his style, and, it, and obviously as we go forward, it only goes on. It's onwards and upwards, really. Yeah, absolutely. I um, yeah. I really like the the bond that the three brothers... Oh, of, yeah, that's one of the best things about it. Y- yeah, th- they, they really come mm. together by the end, and it's really beautiful. It's really sweet. Um, yeah, I love... I love all the scenes. I mean, most of it's on the train, but I love all the scenes on the train. I love how, as on the movie, just like it takes a B halfway through, like, and has this really tragic moment that has that comes out of literally nowhere, and it affects them all so differently. Oh yeah. And and I think I think it's interesting as well going through all of these films how each one of them deals with grief. Do you know the? Because do you know the scene with the one. feathers? They're in the feathers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was watching that and I thought, oh, does the feathers keep, like... And Joe thought I made a good point when I said it. He's uh, like, oh, do the feathers kind of, like, show where they are in, I think, probably dealing with their dad's death? Because, like, Jason yeah. Schwartzman's character lets it go. Um, yeah. Owen Wilson's buries it. And Adrian Brody just holds on to it. And I thought, oh, that's... Are they just, is that how they're dealing with the death? And then Joe said, oh, that's a really good point. I'm like, mm, thank you very much. But that's like, exactly it's what it such is, a yeah. simple and like subtle scene, but I'm just like, I love it. I, I, love I didn't think about it like that, like but that. You, when, you po- when you point it out, it seems obvious. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's, a, that's a really great spot, Suan. That's, yeah. The, the, I think this movie as well, it, like Joe said, it's a comfort movie. Yeah. I, I could see myself putting this on on a Sunday afternoon and be like, oh, this is... I love these yeah. guys. I th- I think maybe it is a bit too long. Like, I think uh, only so you, by uh, a few minutes. Yeah, only by a few minutes. Only by three. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I just I I really loved it. Um, mm. The stuff with the snake that was funny <laughs> and the pepper spray. <laughs> you didn't um, kill my yeah. Little li- 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 little fact. Um, the girl on the train who's called Rita. <laughs> she's in Doctor Who, who also plays a character called Rita. <laughs> and I thought, oh, she, she has a knack for playing characters called Rita. The hotel. Is that... She was in the God yeah. Complex. Yeah. God Complex, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Centrinians. And Centrinians. Oh. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that, actually, weren't we simping over her when we when we watched that? Centrinians, yeah, you were. Yeah, we were all like, oh my god, she is, so, she is amazing. Yeah. To be honest, I think while watching Centrinians, we simped over everyone. I love yeah. Centrinians. Centrinians are such a peak. <laughs> Does anyone have any final thoughts on um, what were we watching? <laughs> the Darjeeling Limited before we move on. Very cute film with Adrian Brody being really fucking hot. We we got we got cameos from Nicole Kidman. No, we didn't. And. Natalie Portman, <laughs> we did. One? Natalie Portman. <laughs> Natalie Portman. That I was, saw Natalie Portman. That was funny that she's just there for like that <laughs> thing, and it's like, okay, Nicole Kidman. Um, and also, she's bald because she shaved her head for *Viva Vendetta*. 
Oh, that, that makes sense. sense. Also a good film. Uh, yeah. Not by Wes Anderson, though. Um, but we, we was, yeah, it was also Bill Murray in it for, like, two scenes. Well, yeah, I think that's a really great moment at the start because we're following Bill Murray trying to follow his train and he misses it and we're like, oh, he's about to get on this train and he's our main character. And then Adrian Brody runs past him and gets yeah, on. Yeah, runs past him, Siwan. I looked down. You, you turned to me. I was like, how did Adrian Brody get no, in wait, front wait, of him? Wait, I was context, like, well, because he ran past him. For context, I was eating a cake and I looked down to get the slice of Apparently cake. Apparently the cake took importance over the dodgy Ling Limited. <laughs> I I was, you heard it here cake. first. <laughs> I didn't want to get um, too big of a piece. Let's move on to Joe's favourite. It's Fantastic Mr. Fox, it's based shit. on the Roald Dahl novel. Um, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just wanted to rile up Joe. This, this, this film <laughs> is a literal work of art. I remember watching it when, I think my, my dad's sister, uh, what's that relation called? Aunt. Auntie. I think my auntie. Oh, sorry, bought... aunt! Aunt! Oh, fuck off! I think my auntie bought it oh. for the family. Oh, my family aunt! Present Do you Christmas. want me to say it in Welsh? <laughs> yes, please. Auntie. <laughs> I think my auntie oh, he's just uh, bought it. But did I say it wrong? No, I just said the same thing. This thing. episode has derailed so much. <laughs> really like has. the Darjeeling Limited. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because that's a train. How'd the train get lost? Um, I'm sorry. I, th- I should have brought that up when we were all talking about it. I just want to talk about my Sorry, movie. keep going about um, your auntie. So, the, so basically, I, uh, the, my, my auntie... Bought it for the family as a Christmas present. And uh, I heard at the time that it was really weird. And that apparently Roald Dahl would turn in his grave. <clears throat> so I watched it and I thought, pretty good. And then I don't know at what point I realised this was one of the best films ever made. If not the best. I don't know what point. Because the first time I watched it, I was like, it's alright. I When did this happen? But it is... How did this happen? Um, that's a Ratatouille reference. But um, it was... It's such a lovely film. Every frame is a painting... Um, it's so wonderfully crafted, like, you could pause that film and just appreciate the work that's gone into each frame. Um, I don't know, it's, again, a comfort film. Wes Anderson is good at these. I had a similar feeling with that film. I watched it, and the first time I watched it, I was like, that's pretty good. And Hmm. then I came away from it, and a few years later, I rewatched it and went, holy shit, this is my favourite film ever. So, I don't know whether we just didn't appreciate it when we watched it the first time, or... Yeah, it's such a, a warm and cosy film as well because you got. I think this is the one where like the Wes Anderson colors color palette comes into it. Yeah. Because you've got these these oranges taking pride of place. Um, but I I don't know a lot about the the book by Roald Dahl. So I don't know how accurate it is to it, but I don't care because it's a really good film. It's it looks really nice. I think everyone involved should be incredibly proud of themselves. Um, the pu- I saw the funny. I saw the fox puppet in person, and it was it was beautiful. Like I was like, "Mom, Dad, can you take a picture of me with it, please?" And there was there was a good chunk of photos of me standing next to it. Um, I don't know, it's wonderful. I could throw it on at any time, but it's only an hour and twenty something minutes. It's so it's easy to long. just watch. Um, yeah, I love it, and I've got the you know I love it so much. I've got the Criterion uh, Blu-ray of it, which has an amazing cover. I'm not sure I've ever heard anybody say a bad word against the film. No. I think some people said um, it was weird at the time because there, there there are some weird moments of like uh, Mr. Fox just smiling like, oh, and I when the that. the models just glow. Um, but that, that, I, I that's love that great. Weirdness. That's so great. That, see, like, see, this is one thing that these that, that Wes Anderson can do in animation. It's make these just weird surrealist moments. And they just everyone can get on board with it because it's like, yeah, no, it's it's animation. He like actually, you can do this in like this. There's a lot of scenes actually in Fantastic Mr. Fox which I reckon well, not scenes necessarily, sorry, but like techniques such as the spotlights and the weird little growls and the smiles and stuff, which I see in some of his live action film films as well, especially the French Dispatch. And I will mention the part um, that I'm talking about when we speak about it later on because it's one of my favorite sections of the film, but. He's able to do these like tricks that he normally does in these stop motion bits, also in live action as well, and I think that kind hmm. of just puts more, you know. Um, I think 
think that just confirms more so how talented he is as a director. I I think his directing is perfect for stop motion. Like, as I said before, maybe I haven't seen the the Steve Zissou, but that was perhaps a test or like a he did it and was like, I want to do a full thing of that. Um, Probably, yeah. It looks really nice. You can definitely see that it's the early works of Fantastic Mr. Fox style animation there. Yeah. Yeah. What what is a cool detail is that um, to have the, the lines feel natural you'd have George Clooney recording in a field or like when they're on a bike, you'd have George Clooney on a bike and they'd be shaking it in a field just to get that naturalism. Amazing um, casting because George Clooney is so charismatic and you believe every word he says. I love him as Mr. Fox. Like all oh, the whole cast, you got Kylie. I love Kylie. Um, the little guy who's like found minnows awesome. under the sink. Um, it's very quotable. Every time I hear the number nine, I don't, not only do I think of Inside Number Nine, but I think of um, the whack bat scene where they're like, divide that by nine, please. I always say that out loud. I don't think anyone gets it, but I will always say it. It's, oh, I love it. And I, I wish I could do the, the, the cool sign that Mr. Fox does, but I cannot whistle. So it's depressing. <laughs> That's not gonna pick up I love the, um, the, the fact that the song because that song is from the book um, the, the song is sort of used in part of, as part of the score Ooh. especially during the ending because it's, so, it, it's quite intense as well so um, the, but I really fun. like the score by I, I don't want to mispronounce it is it Alexander Despla there's a T at the end I think I think I don't know how to pronounce it but um, it, I, if I'm on the train on my way home or anything, I will put that score on because it's such a lovely score to just calm you down and make you feel happy. Um, as you say with the Boggis Bunsen Beam theme, that comes into like when when they're throwing the pine cones and everything's being set on fire. You've got the singing of the children with that, and then you've got like the main theme and combining them together sounds so cool. Like I get chills when I watch it. I'm getting chills it's, just it's talking magical. about it. It's magical. I want to listen to the soundtrack after this, but it's a magical... Can we watch that tonight, C1, please? It's a magical film, though. It's it's beautiful, and if you haven't watched it, do yourself a favour, because it will probably go to the top of your film list. No, tonight you're watching Life Aquatic. That's what you're watching tonight. And that. And that. Um, C1, do you have anything to say <laughs> yeah, about Sorry, does anyone else want to talk about it? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a very good film. Yeah, looks pretty. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know what else to say other than what everybody else has said. It's, you know, it is... I don't remember the first time I watched it. I think I did watch it when I was a kid, obviously. Um, but then we watched it a few months ago. And I thought, okay, yeah, that is a pretty good film. Damn it. Um, but, yeah, no, it's... I get why Joe thinks it's... And Alex, why it's as good as they say. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's um, I, I actually didn't watch it for the first time until a few years ago. Uh, so I was already sort of a film geek, and I was like, I should probably watch this. And so I, I checked it out and was like, this is, yeah, as incredible as everyone says. Um, I watched it again last night, and I, I don't think it's quite as good as I remember. It's still very good. It's still very high tier. But I think I think it's a very solid 9 out of 10. Um. Oh, I didn't give it a rating. Yeah, yeah sorry, ten out of ten. <laughs> I don't think you need to give it a rating. I think, <laughs> I think you, you yeah. know what I'm going to give it. Yeah, um, and we'll de- we'll probably be talking about it again quite soon in an upcoming episode. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, just quickly on a personal note, um, this film is such a calming film. If ever I'm like really anxious, this is the perfect film to put on. I'll just like sit in my bed, put it on. I'll be like. Oh, I can relax. Like, I was in second year of uni. Uh, I was about to go for my jab for COVID. Um, and I was absolutely terrified. But let's go. But let's go. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was terrified because last time I had a jab, I fainted. And I was sick everywhere. So I was like, ah, I need to be calmed down. I'll put this film on. So it's it, it's a nice, calming film. And I'd say that about a lot of Wes Anderson films. That, like, the Darjeeling... Um, limited that 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 works the same way probably but this one it's so more, easy this to just favorite. switch off and watch them it's yeah very I, easy. I i have that relationship with another one of the films later on uh but we will get to it 
Um, does anyone have any final thoughts on Fantastic Mr. Fox before we move on? So we'll Perfect, about. Then let's move on. I, like like I said, uh, I I think um, th- this is really the start of you see the style in its fullest form of every frame is a painting and um, the the fact that like everything looks so symmetrical and everything is quite visually pleasing. Um, so we see the real beginnings of what we f- see the full force of that in Fantastic Mr. Fox. And then from here on out, everything sort of you see a brand develop for Wes Anderson, uh, which is, which is really great. Um, and his next movie after that was, uh, three years later, um, uh, Moonrise Kingdom in 2012. Just me. No, um, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. You've seen Moonrise Kingdom. Cool. Um, I really liked this. I was, so I went to bed last night. I've just finished Fantastic Mr. Fox and I was genuinely excited to watch this. Cause I thought, if because I hadn't seen this before, I hadn't seen much from it, and I thought, if this is how I think this is going, like Fantastic Mr. Fox is, like this this style of filmmaking, the next one is going to be that in live action. I'm very very excited, and I was not disappointed because it's it's exactly what he is doing now, but just you know, <coughs> ten years ago. Um, I think it's got a really great uh, got great central performances from. Um, What's his face? Bruce Willis and Edward Norton. It's it's a shame that Bruce Willis never really worked with him again because he's he's quite fun in this. No, but I do get what you mean. It's nice to see. It would be nice to see Bruce Willis in more kind of not weird roles. Weird roles, not just being shoved into an action movie and being like, yeah, "I'm Bruce course. Willis and I shoot a gun," you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I get what you mean. Um. Edward Norton's great in this. This is uh, the start of his relationship with um, Wes Anderson, so he's in every film from here on out, which is really great. Because uh, Edward Norton's such a weird actor. He's so weird. He's, he's a weird a guy. guy. He's, he? he's, he's close. such a funny little guy. He is really close to sounding like Ben Shapiro. His no, voice. He's not. Not, not his beliefs, no, he's not. but his voice. No, he's not. <laughs> no? No, I don't know where you were getting that from. I don't know. I'm just thinking of Edward Norton's voice. It's like, um, I'm just thinking of that. Um, really nothing like that. But yeah, th- this follows um a a boy scout who meets a girl. They're both they're both like what twelve years old or something, Very and young. they fall in love and decide to run away from either their their the scout leaders and their home. Dog. Um, and it's really sweet. It's it's really cute and they're just they're just desperately in love with each other and they've got like a proper Wes Anderson relationship. Um, it's it's just very cute. I, 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 I think it's a bit any... weird. I think it's a bit weird. Of course you do. Is it because it's about twelve year olds being in love? Joe? Yeah, because that, that's, that. that's not weird. That's not weird. It's only Joe. weird if you think about it in a weird way. It's not weird unless you no, start thinking about it. It's really sexy. weird. Joe. Really, it's you, Joe. You're the weird. It's here. not weird, Joe. It's only weird if you start thinking about it sexually. You know. I'm not. Yeah. Twelve. T- twelve year olds fall in love. That happens. That happens. Joe. Shame. Yeah, Joe. Sorry, it never happened to you. It still hasn't. <laughs> Oh. It does look a very sweet film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to bring it back. <laughs> I'm trying to bring it back. Yeah, no, I, I, th- I think it's really sweet and an earnest, which is mm. kind of hard to come by. A lot of the um, romances that Wes Anderson does are all really sweet. I don't know. Even yeah, if it's no. like a small little romance, like in Life Aquatic with Owen Wilson's character. I just thought that was really sweet and cute. Yeah, and um, what other romances are there? There's the um, there's the entirety of Fantastic Mr. Fox and, and Mr. entirety Fox. of Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, the entirety of Rushmore. Yep. Um, there's there's a really cute relationship in Bottle Rocket, Royal Tenenbaums, Gwyneth Paltrow and Luke Wilson. Grand Budapest Hotel um, with um, Budapest Hotel. The, Isle of Dogs the, has that. Oh yeah. Um, the French Dispatch has that in moments, and Asteroid City has that as well. Like he's, yeah, I I really like his take on like the idea of love. I I think he's I think he's really cute. 
Um, and it's done really well here. Um, and the movie looks really pretty. It's a lot of greens and blues because it's all mostly set in the wilderness. And yeah, uh, I, it, there's not much really to say about it because there's not. It's very bare bones because you know there's that's what most of these movies are. They're they're bare bones plots, and then you've got these wacky characters you put in there, and they're they make the story. Mm. Um, I, it's yeah. Go on, Joe. I was gonna say I think first time I saw this was when it premiered on Film Four because I remember there was like a mini documentary beforehand. And I think my I, my mum or dad came in the room and, and saw a bit of it, and they were like, "Joe, is this is this by the same guy who did Fantastic Mr. Fox?" Because it it has that recognizable style. It was like yeah. the the camera that moves on a on a on a pin. I don't know how to describe it. Like ninety degrees. Yeah, yeah. I'm ter- describing that terribly. Um, and then you have like characters off to one side or completely central. Um, it, yeah, he has that style on it continues into this movie and it's good absolutely it is good i I think you guys would like it if you watched it so um yeah yeah, go go check it out yeah um it's actually we um so what i did before the um before the episode i gathered all the movies and um ranked them based on all of their various scores on various websites um, and got an average score for them all which is what we normally do for the tournaments um, and Moonrise Kingdom is actually, according to all these websites and all these different scores, it's actually the Sniff. second highest rated movie of his career. Um, which I'm I'm a little bit surprised about. I th- I would have thought this was um, this would have been like middle of the pack for him, but no, it's people really liked this one. And I mean, fair enough, it's a really good movie. Um, let's move on to the next one then. His only ever Best Picture nominee at the Oscars. Um, it is 2014's The Grand Budapest Hotel. Yay! And we've all definitely seen this one. Yeah. It's my favourite one. It is the best one. Easily the best. It's perfect. It Please is continue. So the premise of the film, for starters, is brilliant. The, 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 there's a rich woman who dies and who's played by Tilda Swinton, who I absolutely adore. Um... And it shows a gentleman who works at the Grand Budapest Hotel who is basically stealing a painting that is said to be in his name after the after she dies. And it follows her ex-family members or, or along those lines trying to get the painting back or, or basically just kill him. Um, with William Defoe being an amazing murderer. Mm. And it has one of the funniest scenes in any Wes Anderson film where he gets on his little skis and he zips down a mountain and it is incredible. Peak. It is peak. Incredible. And also this film introduced me to Tony Revolori. Didn't butcher yeah, that. Tony Revolori, yeah. We I love, love him. him. He's one of my favourite actors. He's so wonderful. He's he's perfect in this film and then also in the French Dispatch. I adored him in the French Dispatch as well. Um I, I just cannot think- remember him in that film. Don't you worry. He's a very minor role. He's a very small role, yeah. Um, he plays a young uh, criminal, but I'll tell you about that in a bit. That's for later. The the cast again is just brilliant. You've got Jeff Goldblum. You've got like a load of other big roles playing all these incredible characters. Bill Murray's in it. That's a shark. Owen Wilson's in it. That's a shark. Adrian Boddy's in it. That's shark. a shark. Jason Schwartzman's in it. Jason Schwartzman. That's, That's a, shark. a shark. Edward Norton's in it. That's shark. a shark. But it doesn't matter because it's it's just perfect. It's just a perfect, Do, funny little film. Does Wes Anderson? I just thought about this. Does he make a cameo in it? Because I know Fantastic Mr. Fox. He voices the it's either the the estate agent guy, who's like a, I think he's a rat or he's something. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think he voices him. So going forward from that, does he pop up in each film? Let me I see. I don't think so. I don't recognize him. I don't. I, I, didn't I can understand see him, him being in the anim- the stop motion ones because you don't see his face. Yeah. But I don't know about the others. Not. I'm having a really quick Google search, but no, I can't see anything. Yeah, no, I, I didn't spot him. But didn't yeah. you watch it for the first time recently, Zander? Oh no, no! This was the this was his first film that I saw. Oh, was it? 
Yeah, I remember back back in the days of uh, watching. Um, we had Virgin Media TV, and we'd uh, you know like you go on the movies bit, and you could like rent a movie on yeah. there. And we're like, oh, guy, we get the family together, like guys, it's movie night. We're gonna pick a film on here, and the advert for this was on loop, <laughs> and we never picked it. And there was one night I was on my own. I said to my mom, "Listen, can I rent a movie tonight?" She'd gone out, and it was just me. And she said, "Yeah, go for it." So I. I put this on and watched it. And I was like, this is like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. It's so funny. It's such um, a funny little film. It's, it's by far his most popular one yeah. and it is the highest rated one uh, with an average rating um, across all these different metrics of 86. Which is the, pretty solid, really. The, high. Ha- the half of it that I watched last night was very good. <sighs> I, I've seen it before. I've seen it oh, okay, before. Okay. But the half of it I rewatched last night was... Very funny and very good and very, very nice looking. The entire yeah. thing. And we get Jude Law in this one. We get Jude Law. Yeah. Sorry. The entire thing just looks beautiful. There's like you can just screenshot every frame, and it's all just visually pleasing. Great to see all of it. Yeah, and it's um, it, it's it's funny how it plays with narrative as well because it's. The, the film is being narrated by F. Mary Abraham, who's a older version of Tony Z- of, of Rebel Zero, Warriors character. Yeah. But then that's being... That story is being told by an old Jude Law, but that story is actually being read by someone sitting in a park. Yeah. yeah. So it's like multi-layers, and it's only until you get to the end where you're like, oh, right, we're, we're in this girl's head reading this book where this guy is telling a story about how this guy told him a story about this crazy caper he had with I his old I didn't get boss. that bit. I didn't understand that bit. Yeah, because you went to What bed. do you mean? What do you mean? I, what, I will you, admit I got really tired Joe? last night and I had to go up before the movie ended. I, re- oh. I never do that. So Zero, and my eyes the were boss, closing. The Boss Boy Zero... Yeah. He, he, an older version of him is telling it to this author who writes a book about it. Jude Law. Jude Law. Jude Law. Mm-hmm. And then we are seeing it through the perspective of the girl who of a girl who is reading the book that Jude Law wrote. Do you know there's a girl at the beginning who goes to like a little park? Yeah. Her. We're reading it through her eyes, technically. She's got a heck of an imagination. Uh, yeah, she, wait, she so like the stuff we, the stuff <laughs> this is not complicated, Joe. It's this is not stuff complicated. We, so the stuff with Jude Law. He wrote the book. But is she reading? Yes. She's reading his book. She's reading the Grand Budapest, the the, the main story. She, yes. She's reading Jude Law's book. What he? So she's reading the story that he's telling. No, she is she... reading the story that he listened to from an older version of Zero. Yeah, so the book that Jude Law published. Yes. Yeah, is Zero's story that Zero told him. Which is what she's reading. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> and it's her. This is her. <laughs> how she pictures that story, then. Yes. John, I'm gonna punch the you. More I'm gonna punch you. Ask, you. The worse it gets. Just yes. Just yes. No, I'm just trying to understand just it. Just yes, Joe. Yes. 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 You're a Doctor yes. Who fan. How is this confusing to you? Oh, I don't. I there are some Doctor Who things I've only just understood so i'm not the smartest tool in the shed but you know anyway everyone i'm getting you even said that ray wrong you're the best character. anyway ray finds is great in this ray finds really mm. great I-, I think ray finds might be my favorite lead character Fuck yeah in a i in will a, uh, i will back that in a wes anderson Mr. film Gustav because he's great he's so noble and he get, and he gets and he has those moments where he he lowers himself, he gets angry, feels these emotions, and then keeps himself in check and brings himself back and apologises. And it's a re- it's just really grown up. Yeah. Um, so I, I, re- I really like his his mannerisms, his... The way he swears is wonderful. Oh, he's so brilliant. I forgot to say, my favourite part about Fantastic Mr. Fox is that everyone says the word cuss instead oh, of swear. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I, I remember... This, I remember... this cuss, like, it, it's great. Sorry. Back to Grand Budapest, because um, I think Fantastic Mr. Fox is like the only film where no one swears. I mean, because even sense, in Isle I of guess. Dogs, we get we get we get swears in Isle of Dogs. Mm. Um, but anyway, Grand Budapest, um, yeah, really great. Yeah. Just, I think it's deserving of its Best Picture nomination, and it's probably is his magnum opus. I, 
I hope we get another film as good as this, but Please. I, I can't see it happening. If we don't, we always have the Grand Budapest. We always have the Grand Budapest. We'll always um, have Madagascar. Oh, fuck sure. Fuck <laughs> um, t- Alex, do you want to talk more about this? Or uh, to anyone else? Like, Just perfection. Um, Jeff Goldblum's fingers are cut off. In a That's so it's good. So funny. That's it's so, so funny. funny. Um, well, we've been talking about the the evolution of um, Wes Anderson as a director, but we should probably talk about the cinematographer who's been with him in every film apart from his animated ones, and that's Robert Yearman. True, yeah. Who was Ye- um, Yearman? Yearman. Yearman. Ye- Yearman. Yearman. Anyway, um, so he's directed every single one. Not directed, sorry. Um, <laughs> been the director of photography on every single one of his non-animated movies, and the way he's developed his skills as well to make sure everything is perfect for Wes Anderson's vision is fantastic. Like match made in so heaven. he deserves. Ju- I think he deserves just as much credit. Oh, yeah. Um, which is um, yeah, that's my piece on him. Sh- shall we just move on then? Sure. So we were talking about comfort movies, and mine is this next one: Isle of Dogs from 2018. This film got a lot of shit. What? A lot of people that I know, at least, said that they hated this film. I've Why? not seen the best reviews. The on the only reviews I've seen have been like, "It's all right," <clears throat> which I'm I like, think is not fair. I guess it's a wonderful film. It is. I, it's I such think a when good I, story. I think when I first watched it. Because this was what I thought would be my last purchase from HMV. Do you remember when the when it was closing for a bit? Oh, it I had a voucher, and this was the last film I thought I was going to get. It closes every um, year. But I I watched it, and I thought maybe it's because I I love Fantastic Mr. Fox, and nothing was going to compare to that. But I watched it originally, and I was like, it's all right. And then I watched it the other day with you, Siwan, and it again, it's such a comfort film. I think it's a teensy bit too long again but I can only actually, by a tiny I will, amount i will actually agree with you I, I normally don't like the 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 issues of length of films i normally disagree all the time but no i, I will agree with you on this i feel like the the beginning had a bit too many it, it felt like the beginning went on for so long and then the end was so quick yeah the like, there are lots of, of like title cards and yes like, stylized scenes when it's just like okay let's crack on with the plot let's get the dog to the island also what's really cool is i didn't realize this but on the letterbox reviews uh the film's isle of dogs it sounds like you're saying i love dogs which is the point which i think is so sweet i mean i'm not a dog person but this film this film is doing good and making me like them because bill murray's dog looks so adorable i swear he's just it's so cute. All the dogs are adorable in this. All the dogs are adorable. I'd love to like, have, like, like with the Fantastic Mr. Fox puppet. I'd love to see the, all the dogs in like person. If they ever did like a museum or something like that, I'd love to see the physical yeah. puppets. Um, I, I love this movie a lot. Like, this is my ill rainy day movie. Like, this is your, this is my Fantastic Mr. Fox show. Yay. Um, I. Yeah, there's just something about this, and I I love the way the little uh, the little boy says biscuito. It's so cute. <gasps> yes, biscuito. That's cute. Biscuito. So cute. Biscuito. Amazing. The film's, the film's quite violent as well. It is. It feels very, it's violent. very, very violent. Very violent, and it feels like a animated film of a long gone era of like in the 80s when you'd have like well it's animated so it must be fine and we'll show it to all the kids and it's just like no like watership down it's like gory as anything it's like oh my god this haunting Uh, um so it it, i'm surprised it got passed as pg now with now with nowadays anyway this is this is definitely a pg but like especially with all the dogs with all the mutilations and the experiments yeah like i'd 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 have thought that people would have been like yeah no this is too bad um, I love all the um, all the voice actors. I think. Um, oh, I love Tilda Swinton in this. Oh my god, the little dog. dog. Oracle is the Oracle a dog. I love that and he's the dog that watches TV. TV. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so funny, amazing. 
Um, and it, this is the first turn for Brian Cranston in one of these movies. I loved his character, Chief. I want Chief. Chief is really wonderful. great. Um, and I, I also love how they um, seemingly kill off half of the main characters about halfway through the movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's awful. <laughs> that's incredible. It's like, oh my god, fine. they did that. They did. They're fine. They are yeah. fine. Um, yeah, no, just really good stuff. And I also love how anytime there's a little fight, they yeah. go into like a Looney Tunes little ball of dust <laughs> with like arms and legs kicking out. That's amazing. That must have been so fun to animate. That must have been must, so yeah. fun. Um, I like the mystery back back in Japan as well, how they're trying to figure out like what's going on. And the scene of the um, the chef making the sushi. Oh, that that's so really satisfying. satisfying. Incredible piece of animation. That just, that looks incredible. You kind of have a, I think Wes Anderson likes satisfying food scenes because you've got the one in Grand Budapest in the prison where oh. they're cutting the bread and... And stuff and the like cheese that. And, that, and the cheese. Oh, and when when they I'd get the when they get the cake. Oh my god! When they get the cakes in as well. Yeah. And they and they all like, Ooh. <laughs> like that's great. Um. Yeah, I I really really like this movie. It 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 feels like a hard sell to people who aren't like film fans or or know Wes Anderson stuff. But I just I th- I, the Japanese setting is fantastic. It. Paves a lot of way for a lot of uh, really beautiful artwork. Um, Scarlett and... Johansson as uh, Nutmeg was really good. Really good. I wasn't and it, she's it. she's actually like a similar role to what she has in Asteroid City. Oh, is it? Yeah, quite similar. Which I I appreciate because I like that character. So mm-hmm. yeah, why not sort of do it again? <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Um, do the wrong. Do the I love you, Daddy. I think that's a, a reason as to why it, it. I, it got like kind of not negative reviews necessarily, but nowhere near as positive as his other films. I think because of like people kind of went into it being like, "Oh, it's going to be like another Fantastic Mr. Fox," and then it wasn't, and then people kind of got upset about that. Possibly, I think it, it sort of just proves that people um, are flawed and can be wrong. Yes, you, you, you say all this, but Fantastic Mr. Fox is the third. Uh, tied third for um, in this little ranking I've got here. It's tied third with Rushmore with an average score of 83.83. Whereas Isle of Dogs is fifth and that has an average score of 82.5. I'm sorry, who so, ranked who ranked Fantastic Mr. Fox with Rushmore? <laughs> I no no one did specifically, Joe. I've tried to explain this many times. This is stupid. This is this is based You're on stupid. six different oh, scores. No. It's the, it's the overall well, these... average, didn't you say? Yeah, it's the overall average. The average is wrong because those are not on the same level. Is that what you films. say to women to make yourself feel good? Ah! <laughs> Zinger! Wow! <laughs> <Smoke my sink. laughs> oh, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. Joe. <laughs> maybe that's not then. Ne- maybe not necessarily then with like actual reviews, but like at least when people I've spoken to, that's what like they've said. They've yeah, said, m- like, most people I thought have been it was like... going to be a funny little Fantastic Mr. Fox kind of like similar, and I'm like, no, it's yeah. it's arguably just as good. I mean, it is just as good. Um, I think I would rather watch yeah. Isle of Dogs right now than Fantastic Mr. Fox, but um, yeah, you know, um, yeah, really wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. I would. It would be a big recommend from me. One thing and I would me. say, one thing I would say is that none of those people except for Atari deserve their dogs. So true. Because none so of them, Tracy, they Tracy. all just let it go. Oh yeah, Tracy. Tracy. They all just let their dogs go without question. Didn't even try to get them back. You're not allowed a dog. I don't know Pace how up. they could. Like, I've got thirteen of the little so and so. If it's thirteen. Thirteen. Sixteen. Thirteen. If one of, if even one of them left, I'd be beside myself. No, but like, so they all just let them go. And they're like, yeah, okay. And then they got them back. They don't deserve to get them back. I think that shows in the I film, am... though, the, the, the power of the propaganda that the, yeah. the government releases. Don't deserve a dog. I, um, the, the, I think one of the most heartbreaking scenes as well is the first time, the first moment that Atari gets the um, his initial guard dog, played by Liev Schreiber. And he's just, he, like, they, can fight, they figure out they can understand each other. And he just starts talking to him, like whispering to him, and Liv Schreiber's just like, "It's okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening." And she starts crying. It's, it's like so that's sweet. so messed up. 
Um, yeah, really great movie. Go watch it. It's I, it's probably it's my favorite. Probably now. Now you it. say this. Um. I mean, I don't know. Fantastic Mr. Fox and Iron Dogs are pretty close. I'd say. Oh, I guess yeah. it's just because I love stop motion. Um, yeah. And also, as well as that, we have animated sequences as in, like, not stop motion, but um, I, I don't know how you... Not computer generated, but like 2D animation in this as well. Yeah. Not just stop motion. We, we do get moments of that, yeah. French Dispatch, but, you know. If we, we'll that. get to that in a moment, yeah. Um, literally yeah, so there's coming up next. Literally coming up next. Um... Yeah, love Isla Dogs. Shall we move on? Yeah. Sure. Right. The French Dispatch. Alex is itching. Dude. So when I referenced before how Fantastic Mr. Fox does these wonderful kind of um, features that could only be pulled off in animation. Untrue. Wrong. Get out of here. Don't talk to me. The specific scene I want to talk about is in one of the first few sections, specifically the art section, where we have the prisoner who goes to prison and he ends up doing these wonderful pieces of art. Now, when we see how he, why he got arrested, we see, we literally see, bless him, oh, I've forgotten his name already. Um, Tony Revolori. Tony Revolori, there we go. He's sat at the bar, he does a shot, uh, looks over, sees these two bartenders roughing up this old man, and it pans back to him. Spotlight goes on his face and he starts growling and like gritting his teeth and then he gets up walks over and the camera pans away and there's blood splatters and obviously he's killed them Yeah, and throughout the rest of that segment with that character even though it changes onto an older version of him He still does the gritting of the teeth and the spotlight and the growling whenever he's angry and it oh It's such a wonderful kind of like thing with this character and it reminds me so much of Isle of Dogs and Fantastic Mr. Fox of this like stop motion kind of feature um, and I think it just does go to show how kind of creative both the director and you know cinematographer for these films are absolutely did you put your hand down oh no 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 I'm blocking out there's a thumbnail for the nun and I really don't like it so <laughs> just um, turn it off no because I'm so excited about the French dispatch um <laughs> Because I want to see the scene you're describing. Um, it's it's in like the first parts of the film. Just look up um, Tony. T- just look up Tony Revolori in uh, the French Dispatch. It'll show you because th- that's literally the only scene he's in. Yeah. I don't think um, I understood the film, but wait, are we on? We're so, on the French. Yeah, I didn't understand. We that. are. Yeah. No. So so the film is um, it's presented in it's an anthology film. Mm. It, the first of of um, his career. And it follows a well, it's it's the final edition of a paper called the French Dispatch or a magazine, and the editor is Bill Murray. And at the start, we learn that he's died, and so this is the final edition of that book. Um, and it starts off with a little uh, piece about Owen Wilson, who's cycles around European cities. Great, love that. And then it follows three stories. One, it follows Tilt Swinton, who is um, discussing a a very popular artist who's Benicio del Toro, who only became who only got his fame through um, painting while he was in prison. Um, and that scene also includes um, performances from Leia Sedu and Adrian Brody. Then you've got the middle section, which follows um, Francis McDormand, who is um, writing from a student revolution in a city in France um, and that follows the revolution's leader Timothy Chalamet and it also includes a weird moment from Christoph Waltz fun yeah um, and I, I really like that section I, I really like I just love Timmy big Tim like Tim um, and then the final section follows a um, Jeffrey Wright who's um, reminiscing with Liev Schreiber about a uh, a story he um, went and did for a, about a chef um, that turns into a kidnapping and subsequent regaining of child. And Edward I Norton is the one. kidnapper. Yeah. It's, I think it's a really fun movie and I really like anthology movies specifically because if there's not a bit, if there's a bit you don't like, it's not going to be on for very long. Like there's another bit coming up that you'll probably will like. And for me, I think the um, 
I think that first story is the weakest. I I still obviously I don't think there's a bad story in this, but I think well, the Owen the, Wilson the, one or the artist one. The artist one, the main story. So the Owen Wilson one is like a prologue, really. Um, and then the other three, like I think the fi- I think the stories get better and better as they go on. That makes sense. That that final story with Jeffrey Wright is wonderful. It is. I didn't understand it though. What, do you, what don't you understand about it, honey? I, I remember we were watching it. I, I just, I, I think I turned to you, Saron, and I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't think we've seen the French Dispatch. We watched it together. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. I do not. Well, we that's watched embarrassing. It, basically. Yeah, we that is embarrassing. Film. That's, oh. well, we watched it, basically, and I didn't understand yeah. all of it. Like, last year. In Barfield. I don't remember that. Oh. I don't remember that. Who just slammed that door? Finish. Yeah, fucking kill him. <laughs> so, him. well, well, that that final section, it, it's Jeffrey Wright and Lee Schreiber on like a talk show, and then so Jeffrey Wright is telling the story that he's written for the paper for the magazine, um, because he's what what was it? He's not got a photographic memory. He's got a typographic Typograph- memory? yeah typographic memory. so he remembers every word he's ever written that's great um so he's tell he's recounting this story of when he went to this um th- this guy's house who's got a little son who who he adopted who he's sort of training up to become his protege in the police um and they've got a, ve- a world famous chef who works for them and he's gone there to sample some of his food and do some writings on the chef then the um the, the, the son gets kidnapped by some some bandits uh, ran by Ed, Edward Norton, and um, who also has um, Cersei Ronan. Lo- love Cersei, love Cersei Ronan. And then they try and get him back. And then when they do, they they poison everyone because the chef goes in and poisons them all and accidentally eat, well, eats the poison as well to sort of sell it that it's okay to eat. And everyone eats it except for the chauffeur. So the chauffeur then takes the kids and drives around. And that bit is then animated. And it's really beautifully animated. Really funny as well. And then they get the kid back. I think my one gripe with this film would be the amount of nudity in it. There is a lot of nudity. There is a, There's a lot. lot of bo- lot, a lot of boobies. A lot of boobies. And also, the amount of films that Tilda Swinton is in that she's naked in. There's so many. She likes getting her boobies out. I mean, fair enough. Each to their own. I won't criticise. But, yeah. God, there was a lot of booby. I like boobies as much as the next person. But boobies are great. I was like, that was, that great sounded so British. Like, God, there was a lot Good of boobies. Good heavens, there was an awful uh, lot of boobies. Lots of bush and rack on display. Oh, Joe, don't say bush and rack. Hell, fire. <laughs> that's nasty. <laughs> but I didn't understand this film, so that's allowed. What? <laughs> I didn't even understand the art one. I didn't know what was going on. The art one is quite simple. Joe, Joe, I'm, I'm start, I'm starting to think that Joe might just be a bit of an idiot. I'm, st- I'm, I'm starting, starting to think. To think I think that the, the art one was like so. They explained it. Tilda Swinton did a PowerPoint on it. <laughs> yeah, they explain everything, Joe. It's not a complicated movie. I don't know. <laughs> we know. I thought. Are you okay, oh, honey. Are you okay, sweetheart? Sorry. I'm sorry. Are you okay? We'll stop making fun of you. <laughs> it's okay. Bye. That's a lie. We won't <coughs> stop. But but for right now, we'll stop calling you stupid. Is that okay? Is that okay? Like he's going to turn around and go, no, keep doing it. <laughs> I get off on it. <laughs> um, see, it's really weird. I, I saw this in cinemas. I, I really liked it. And but all of the um, th- this is when you talk about like middling reviews. This has all like reviews in the seventies. Mm. Um, so overall, it's got a average score of seventy three point five. Uh, puts it like roughly around the middle of his career, which I think is feels a little bit unfair because I think it's I think it's better than that. I think it's I, it's it's a solid eight or nine. I like, was going to say. Maybe. I think that's surprising. Because it went basically straight to streaming, didn't it? For it free. did, yeah. It was, well, yeah, it was in, class, but... yeah, it was in 2021. So it, it got time. a very limited release and then just dumped on Disney Plus quite quickly. Um, but I think I mean, it's. I I th- Sorry, go on, Joe. Let's say I enjoyed it. 
Um, I enjoyed what I, oh, I didn't know what was I happening, just, but I liked what I was looking. <laughs> I didn't, at. I didn't know what was happening, but I enjoyed what it looked like and what they were trying to, to do. And I liked the animated sequence that was to the animation. That was cool. It was re- really good and really funny. Just re- out of nowhere, really great. Um, and I also like that it's um it's a real interesting look into the idea of journalism. This is um, true. Like. Th- the, the, this is it's it sort of become a pattern now so we've got a the french dispatch is a great look at journalism and then asteroid city is a great, really great look at storytelling and and how you write something and how something comes to be and you know what what needs to stay in and stuff like that and that's that's a really good look at that um so he's at an interesting point in his career i'm interested to see what he does next well, we know what he's done. Well, doesn't next. he do Asteroid City next? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he does do Asteroid City next. Yeah. I mean, I. And you've yeah. already seen it. I have seen it, and Did it was. So why are you chatting? I know. I know. I mean, after Asteroid City, I mean, because well, we I, I just said we he's. We need to like, like, lay this out a little bit more. Joe's gonna get confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As, so Asteroid City is his new, newest movie. I am the only one to to have seen it. You guys, it's really good. I really liked it. Um, I was giggling the entire time. It's it's got the that pitch perfect dry humor, um, and I think everyone does has has a really great role in it. Um, it's set in this little town that's sort of known for having a little asteroid in it, and so everything's sort of space themed. And they go for a uh, a space summer camp. Jason Jason Schwartzman is the m- main character. He's like a an ex war photographer. He's so fit. Yeah, mm. this this is the year of Jason Schwartzman, hundred percent. This in spite of us, mm. oh, love it. Um, and he um, he de- develops a a friendship with uh, Scarlett Johansson, who's a is a very famous actress whose daughter is very scientifically gifted. Um, it's got it's got you you it's your typical Wes Anderson brand movie. Like it's it's a lot of fun. I th- I think it's probably. Uh, it's probably one of his funniest movies. When I'd does say. this come out on digital? Well, that's it. It just had its biggest, his sick. biggest opening weekend of his entire career, and they're putting it on digital. Like I think starting next week, which is kind of gross. Does that mean Disney Plus? No, I think it. It doesn't mean that. No, it means like you'll be able to get it on like iTunes. Yeah, because yeah, Disney Plus has a and lot of magic West, uh, websites. Has a lot of Wes Anderson films. Disney Plus it does, does. Yeah, yeah. But most of them were either released through Buena Vista, which is Disney's like live action thing, or Searchlight. Yeah. So, um, there you go. We did it. We talked about every Wes Anderson film from beginning to end. Now we just um, gotta do Spielberg. Oh my god! I've done. I've set up the tournament, guys. I've set it up. It's so exciting. Um. But before we um before we go, does anyone want to like sell me a movie or a TV show or a game or a music or a book? If you're a nerd, I like how the book is the nerd, not the video game. Yeah, books are for nerds. I like reading. I, I could never. I bought I like four fanfics. today. I can't read while I'm also trying to see things. Wait, um, the one the one I spoke about earlier, Sue one. You can have that one because I've got a new one. Yes. I um, guess the one's going first. Uh, the Matilda thingy, that uh, the new one, oh. the musical. Oh, okay. We watched okay. it okay. the other day. Um, it's actually very good. Um, I thought, you know, uh, I won't. I'm not. I wasn't gonna compare it to the old one, but you know, it's kind of inevitable. It's obviously it's different. Um, because you know, obviously, set in the UK, I think. There are some differences to the film. I don't know. I haven't read the books, so I don't know if it's more accurate or not accurate. But it's very good. Very good music. Theatre kids are terrifying in the best possible way. Because, like, what they do throughout the film, the dancing, all that, you're just like, okay, I could never do that at that their age. But it's also just, it's very good. And it's got very good songs. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say Matilda. It gave me Paddington 2 vibes, so it's high on my list. Very nice, very nice. I like a musical. I like a musical. Um, who's next? Joe. <laughs> uh, so, 
Um, I watched the first Top Gun um, the other day, and it was it was all right. <laughs> Goose, my beloved. Um, and then I watched Top Gun Maverick that evening, and it's literally one of the best films ever made. Like it's got a sick beach film what, like scene. Yeah, like literally watching the final bit of that film. <laughs> set my laptop off now. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Joe's going at it again. Oh, God. <laughs> Literally, watching the final bit of this film is so nerve wracking and like. Yeah, it, it, it's filled with adrenaline. Like I, I was pumped. I was, I was so fly. excited. Will they crash? I, I, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. No, but I, like, I got chills. Ins- I, I got chills and goosebumps throughout. And the bit yeah. when the the bit at the end. I know you've mentioned this before in, in an old episode, but the ending. I, I almost cried. And like it just reminded me of Goose. Goose would be proud of this film. Um. Top Gun Maverick is 100% one of the best blockbusters I may have ever seen. It's absolutely incredible. And what you're saying about stakes, Joe, it's one of the first blockbusters I've seen in a while where I'm like, I'm not sure if everyone's going to walk out of this. Yeah, because like, the first, when I watched the first film, I thought, okay, it's going to be, you know, just a happy-go, lucky, plain movie. And then someone dies, you know, that happens. And it's really sad, especially as it's one of the main characters. So this film... Anything can happen. Um, it, it's it's heartwarming with some scenes with um, what's his name, Val Kilmer. That was really sweet. Yeah. Um, Tom Cruise. It's like he never left the role. He, he he's such a good actor. Isn't he? It's a shame about the Scientology. He's so <laughs> I cool. Knew that was coming. I knew he's that so was cool. Coming. Listen, listen. He's not with it anymore. Yes, he right? is. He's not with Apparently, it. he is. No, yes, he's not. Xander, are you part of Scientology nice. then? Guys, you guys are lying. All right. Sorry. Tom, That's Tom what a Scientologist Cru- would say. Tom, Tom <laughs> Cruise is an incredibly crazy man. Yeah, no, I know. Um, That's why he's with Scientology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's a lizard. Um, but uh, it's such a good film, and I definitely recommend you watch it. It took me this long to watch it, and I regret it. So watch it now. Don't leave it any longer than I did. Don't be a schmuck. Uh, and it's very pretty as well. It's a, it's a very good-looking movie. Yeah. It's a very I like planes, film. so... Same. I like planes. That's my autism coming out. It makes every autistic kid that likes planes. So, like, I'm sat here like, planes, yay! <laughs> so. Um, Alex, do you got one? Or do I you do, want me to go? I do. You got one. Um, you got one. Go for so, it. So, I don't know if anyone here has played Stardew Valley. Oh, or you've heard of it. It's time to stop. Um, it's a really little... It's a fun, cute little farming game where you build relationships with the community, and it's wonderful. But that's not my recommendation, because almost every kind of autistic mentally ill person has played that game i have sunk over 600 hours into it um this yeah there we go xander's played it there we go so this is actually the caveman version of stardew valley it's called roots of patcher and it is wonderful you literally play as a member of a tribe and you help them build new ideas and you can tame mammoths and boars and lions and you can have them as little pets is there and build a, a cute little community and discover the clock I recently discovered next is the wheel you know onwards and upwards um, then sliced bread and then sliced bread <laughs> we're nearly there we've just discovered wine as well um, so if you're looking to get it it's on, it's on sale um, with the steam summer sale um, and also you can probably get it I got it cheap on CD Keys at least, which is a trusted website for cheap games. But I would, if anybody likes that, I would really, really recommend Roots of Patcher because it's it's so cute and wonderful. And also, Took you, is the best character ever, and no one can fight me on that. You've actually sold me on that. It's really good. It sounds like fun. It's really fun. I have two. Oh, you greedy Go man. For it. I know. I have a movie and a TV show. What would you like to hear first? The movie. The movie first. So, on that list of movies that I gave you earlier that I watched last week, I missed a movie on purpose to make sure you guys watched it. Ooh. Um, it is 1986's Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. Musical starring Rick Moranis. Um, 
and he plays a plant a, a, a he works at a plant shop and he finds a weird plant and it's secretly an alien and it grows into a human eating plant and he has to feed it blood and then eventually kill people and feed it to him so it gets big and he gets famous right this sounds cool it's a musical as well i hate musicals though ah musicals it's really fun. great though I don't it's like really fun. great though I like sitting in my room, smoking a cigarette, doing a shot of vodka, and playing Stardew Valley. Okay. I like I like watching the Batman. Yeah. <laughs> I like what was it what was it that I did this week? I spent two hundred quid on like army military gear so I could cosplay Ghost from COD. Yeah, that's what I've done this week. So. so. <laughs> um, but yeah, Little Shop of Horrors. It's really great fun. The animatronics are incredible. Oh, are they practical? And the. Yeah, yeah, no, the big plant, it's all practical. It's at 1986. CGI didn't exist back then. And it looks incredible. Well, then how did um, they think the moon landing? <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Um, so they... Uh, th- there's a, there's a couple of moments in it that you're like, how did, how did they even do that? Um, and it's a, it's a really cool looking in the behind the scenes stuff and seeing how they did things. Um, the songs are amazing. I have an affinity for the musical in general because I, I did it at school and I was the main character. <laughs> um, but whatever. So, yeah, going back to this movie after a few years without seeing it is amazing. Also, if you do see it, make sure you watch the director's cut and not the theatrical version because the director's cut includes the original ending to the musical and they film this incredible sequence that like where like the plant takes over like cities... And it looks amazing, and you can tell that most of the budget went there because the rest of the m- movie is in like four locations. And this one set, this last like 10 minutes, like they're destroying buildings, they've got like giant animatronics. It looks incredible. So if you are watching it, make sure you seek out the director's cut of the movie. It's like an extra 10 minutes longer, but it is so much, it's so worth it, so worth it. Um, that's the movie. And the TV show, um, it's a BBC comedy that started back in the 80s and it's still going today. Um, it's a sci-fi comedy called Red Dwarf. Ah, uh, because it's just been added to iPlayer, hasn't it? Show. I love that show. It so has much. just been added to iPlayer, so I did it. a binge watch and watched every single episode. It's so good. I, this was my childhood. I loved this as a kid. My dad loves it and so got me into it when I was a kid. Um, and it's it's really cool because it's so it, it follows um, a a scouser, Dave Lister, played by Craig Charles, um, who gets frozen on his um, on his on this mining ship, uh, gets put in stasis for bringing a cat on board, um, and accidentally is stuck in there for three million years after a radiation leak kills everyone on the crew, and so it's just him on the ship, a hologram version of his old bunkmate who he hates, and a humanoid cat creature that evolved from the cat he brought on board um and it's the three of them and a robot called Crichton that gets uh, introduced in like season three um and the ship's computer holly um and they go on wacky sci-fi adventures and the best thing about it is that it's it can be really complex sci-fi like it's really like brain churning but also like really basic comedy like these guys are just they just hate each other and they just they just get on. It's really cool. Um I think seasons three to six are like peak. And then it got um it sort of got re- rebooted back in um twenty twelve for season ten. And then it went over to Dave and got like, you know, it had three more seasons over there. Which is it's all fine. There is still still some good stuff in it, but if you're looking for like the peak of the show, it's seasons three to six incredible stuff i, so, I think um, I, I watched a clip of um probably was the dave stuff of it was like Crichton in like this like ferrari outfit like yeah. it was a midlife crisis and i, I watched yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. and i thought this isn't funny <laughs> it so, was kind of funny it's the earlier stuff funny oh it's yes so it's, funny. it's very funny very very funny okay I got um, yelled at once for laughing at it too loud at like one AM. That's that's how <laughs> funny it was. Um, yeah, it's it's all on iPlayer, so go and check it out. It's a, it's a really good show. That was a peak suggestion. That was peak. 
I'm really glad you like it. Dude, oh my God, I've, I watched it, I've watched it for years. Because I got introduced to it as well when I was a kid. And I've been watching it ever we, since. Um, did you watch that final special they made um, back in 2021, was it? 2020? The Promised no. Land. No. I haven't, yeah, the Promised I haven't Land. watched anything from Don't like 2019. That. That's when I So that, that final special they did, They um, me and my dad went down to London and we watched oh. the first half of it be filmed. We were sat in the audience for it. Unreal. I'm Unreal. so jealous. We've got um, we've got signed stuff from uh, Craig Charles, uh, Danny John Jules who plays the cat, and Robert Llewellyn. Um, and you didn't invite me. I, this was well before I knew you. you bitch. <laughs> um, so yeah, bit, we're, we're big fans over here. So uh, yeah, go check it out if you haven't seen it. it it's there really there was a girl I liked once who liked Red Dwarf, <laughs> so I asked someone to give me the best episodes to watch, so that I knew about it. What did, did do you remember? What episodes they gave you? <laughs> no, because they might have given it. you the wrong ones. Just to show watch it. Um, well, you can't criticize yeah. anybody for being a simp, Joe. You actually can't. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for this week. Um, thank you so much to everyone for listening. This, this will probably be a long episode. Oh yeah. Um, but worth it because we went through an entire man's career. What's your favorite Wes Anderson film? Let us know. Um, respond to our th- thing on Spotify, and also you can now. Um, Tweet at us because uh. Alex is running the Twitter account like like an absolute bouse. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, Die. And yeah. you can also send us messages on Facebook and Instagram. All the links are in the description. Um, thank you so much to everyone for listening. Um, Alex, where can the people find you? Um, oh God, they can now find me on the official Film Me in Pod 1 podcast on twitter but bar that nowhere good luck (laughs) thank you uh joe thank you for being here where can the people find you uh you can find me on twitter at cook 11 joseph youtube rebel whovian instagram joe cook underscore to artist and you can find me on freds now at that same uh name so joe cook underscore to artist fantastic and siwan Last but not least. Uh, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter under C101, but I don't particularly do anything on there. So maybe don't. Um, but then I um, try to review everything I watch on Letterbox. So maybe call me there. Thank you for being here. Next week, we are... Um, is it... Wait, is it Mission Impossible next week? The yes! school! Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh. So we're going to talk about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 next week. So make sure you are strapped into your chairs. Uh, and because then we'll it should take be that chair one. and we'll throw it off a cliff. With yes, Tom. Just, 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 just Tom Cruise. With Tom Cruise on it. <laughs> Say that like he's dead. Um, <laughs> uh, make sure you are uh, you are listening to that one. And we will, we will see you next week. Goodbye. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Amazing. My butt hurts. <laughs>